the Second World War turned the globe into a battlefield. Over 80 years later, the war is fast slipping out of living memory, but the remains of that terrible conflict can still be found all around us today. From mega bunkers to bullet holes, shipwrecks to cemeteries. I'm James Rogers, a war historian who is fascinated by these time capsules. They tell us the stories of death and glory, oh, wow. ingenuity and desperation. Now, for the History Hit YouTube channel, I'll be looking for the last traces of World War II. Scattered along the West German border, in fields next to streams and forests, there are strange structures. Lumps of concrete and twisted steel poking out of the ground. These are the remains of one of the most daring projects of Hitler's rule, the Siegfried Line. Long before the outbreak of the Second World War, Hitler had plans on German expansion to the east. However, he was concerned about the response of the west. So, to deter any western allied intervention, he wanted to build a line of defences at his rear, his Siegfried Line. The Siegfried Line was made up of bunkers, ditches, tank traps and minefields running 400 miles along the German border with France, Luxembourg and the Low Countries. In 1936, Germany remilitarized the Rhineland and construction of the mighty Westwall could begin. However, progress was slow, too slow for Hitler. And so in 1938, he handed the task over to his engineering genius, Fritz Tote, who immediately set about building the defensive line of Hitler's dreams. He put more than 500,000 men to work on the project, using millions of tons of gravel and cement and thousands of coils of barbed wire. Within four months, he had built 10,000 bunkers and innumerable belts of tank traps, it was an astonishing feat. As the project continued apace, Hitler was noted to have said that no power on earth would be able to break through the most gigantic fortified zone of all time. And for a long time, he was right. For almost six years, the Siegfried Line lay intact and almost untested, impeding no one other than the local farmers. But having successfully broken out of Normandy by the end of August 1944, Allied forces were keen to press home their advantage. Whilst the British and Commonwealth troops pressed north into the Low Countries, the Americans were given the task of driving straight to Germany. The most direct route was through the Hürgen Forest, on Germany's border with Belgium. But to get through, they would have to smash through the Siegfried Line. And it's around the Hürgen Forest that you can still find some of the best preserved remains. This belt of defences sits just outside the village of Rutgen, that's situated right on the German border with Belgium. This would be the first line of defence. The whole point of the Siegfried Line was that it would stop the Allied advance into Germany. It was built up of row after row of defensive structures that were designed to sap the advancing Allied power. These are dragon's teeth. They're reinforced concrete blocks that stretch as far as the eye can see. You can imagine it, there's thousands of them. They're anti-tank traps. So tanks get stuck in these and they strip the Allies of any armoured support. The Allies then move through 
They're met with row after row of barbed wire and massive minefields that deliberately funnel them down towards preset defensive posts filled with machine guns and artillery. The dragon's teeth certainly look impressive, but Allied engineers soon discovered that simply covering over the sections of the traps in earth, creating a sort of bridge, meant that armour could just keep rolling through, but certainly much slower than was needed during the opening stages of the offensive. What compounded the Allied problem here was the landscape. The thick, steep, wooded hills of the Hurtgen Forest were an ideal defensive position, and the man in charge of the Army Group West was General Volta Model. He exploited it to the full. He ordered his men to dig trenches and fortify the bunkers. The safety of the Reich depended on the Siegfried Line. And it's bunkers like these ones, deep in the heart of the forest, at Ochsenkopf, that would bear the brunt of the Allied attempts to crack the line. The belt of the Siegfried Line directed the Allies towards bunkers like this. They were interconnected in this forest with a number of other bunkers and they created defensive points, Widerstands nests. There would have been hundreds of points like this across the Siegfried line. Their aim was to concentrate fire down on the Allies, creating lethal kill zones. What's rare about this bunker is you can still see the original colours, painted green for purposes of camouflage, and they melted in to the landscape. Each one would have been around five metres thick of reinforced concrete. You'd have had 12 men inside this. They would have been a tough nut to crack. You would have had barbed wire all across the top and probably a machine gun post up there as well for extra measure, along with the trenches all around the outside. If you were the Allies, you wouldn't want to come up and face one of these. But face them they did. The offensive started in September 1944, but the excellent German positions behind the Siegfried Line caused brutal casualties. The Americans were forced to dig rudimentary foxholes, desperate for any sort of cover. And you can still find evidence of those positions here in the forest today. Over the next three months, more and more troops were thrown into what became known as the American Meat Grinder. By the 16th of December, the Americans had lost over 30,000 men, and the whole offensive ground down to a bloody stalemate. The Siegfried Line had held for now. In early 1945, renewed assaults along the length of the line meant that it was eventually punctured and instead of being a formidable fortress once captured, as Patton reportedly said, the Siegfried Line became a monument to man's stupidity. But even today, traces of the Siegfried Line can still be found, not a monument to stupidity, but to those men who died whilst fighting along it.